<laughs> Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Uh, good morning. It's quite early in the morning. I've had the gate crash in my own studios because Debbie Arnold and a mob of Dorises have turned up here to film their program, Ladies That Have Botox, apparently. In fact, one of her friends just said, I love your new teeth. Yes, yeah, she's Welsh, of course. I love your new teeth, and uh, you must have some Botox in your neck here to stop you biting them. I said, I'd never grind me teeth, you know. Apparently, you can have a Botox uh, injection in your Gregory Peck that stops the Amsteds from grinding. You know when you go to sleep like that and you're grinding your fucking teeth because of the worries and thinking, oh my God, what's going on? Anyway, these will never grind. These are made of kryptonite, these are. These are Superman's teeth. If I opened a tin of peas this morning with them. They're absolutely fantastic, so none of that with me. Now, talking of Debbie Arnold, um, first of all, I want to thank everybody uh, who signed up to watch the election night special. Oh, wow, did we have a hoot. And thousands of people watched so many. We really, really struggled to get that many people signing up at one stage. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave the program on for another 14 days and you can watch it free. So all you people watching this on YouTube, you can go to ustream.com, register uh, your, your bits. You don't need a credit card or anything like that. You just need to register and then you can click on that one program and you can see it for another 14 days. Then we'll just stick it on the thing. And we're going to do another one at the end of that 14 days. There's going to be another one on about me and the troops that uh, really shouldn't be allowed on the television because of copyright. But fuck it, we'll put it on. We can do it. We want here. We don't care. Well, the Labour Party locked me up. Here, yeah, listen, I woke up this morning um, early. This I wake up early. I went to bed at uh, 10 o'clock. I'll tell you what I watched last night. I watched... Um, that star, I love Star Trek, but I watch it with Cumberbang Slacky Batch, whatever his name is, in it, playing the bad man Khan, and it was shite. And it's the first time I've ever turned off a Star Trek movie. Anyway, anyway. So then I wake up this morning. The first thing I do, because I know I had to come in here early and make you buggers laugh, you have a look at the news, don't you? And this is the headline in the papers. Fucking nearly shit myself. It said tax is going to be raised to 90%, and the retirement age will be lowered. Well, you know, first of all, I don't earn enough money to pay 90% tax. Not anymore. I used to, <laughs> but I don't now. After all these divorces, I'm lucky if I can pay fucking 10% tax. But anyway, anyway, and I'm past the age of retirement. So I feel sorry for the poor bastards that are going to have to suffer. But then I thought, my God, talk about the Labour government landing on its feet and going all lefty on us. But then, thank fuck, I noticed it was the frogs. <sighs> So the French have now, this is what the French are going to do. So I thought to myself, what's happened there? The last thing I read before I was going to bed was that a right-wing government was going to be, uh, the, the new boss of France was this woman, uh, Marie Le, M M uh, Mary Biro. Oh, I know, I make these terrible jokes. Madame Pen. What's her name? Pen? Something? Pen? Pen and ink. Anyway, she was a bit of a right-winger. And um, anyway, she, um, she never got in. She never got in. It seems that two lefty lots have got together, the People's Front or the Judean People's Front, and formed a coalition. It's gone to rat shit, France. No one likes the president, little Macron. He's only about that big. And the word round the French campfire is the country is going to be ungovernable. Well, thank fuck someone's in the worst shit state than us. Although we're not in it yet. We're just sort of projecting. We've got to give these people a chance. So, listen, talking to the Labour Party, I spoke to one of my sources. I have sources deeply embedded in the Labour Party. He's quite a big knob. Well, no, he has a big knob. And he... T <laughs> Sorry, John. He tells me <laughs> that something that's not been mentioned, and this is really, really interesting, is that under Keir Starmer's leadership, the Labour Party membership has halved. Halved since Keir Starmer took over. It always worried me that, that, that good working class people don't have anything to do with uh, Keir Starmer. What's he know about working class people? I know about working class people. I used to be one before I got rich and famous. I'm probably becoming working class again. No, seriously. I was born in a council house in Charlton. I was from working class family. My dad was in the army. My mum worked in Woolworths and then worked as a cleaner. Do you know what I mean? I'm a working class lad. I know what it's like to drink brown ale and fuck fat birds. Don't worry about that. And people say, oh, Jim, you've changed. Yes, I have changed. I don't drink brown ale anymore. Uh, and if... <laughs> <laughs> but, but how can working class people relate to Keir Starmer? Do you remember Mandelson? You know Mandelson very much. Like he was light on his feet, wasn't he? Mandelson, he went up to uh, 
Huddersfield or somewhere, Middlesbrough, where he was going to be the MP. And he walked into a fish and chips and a big bowl of mushy peas there. And he said, can I have some fish and chips, please? And a bowl of that guacamole. Guacamole! Fucking mushy peas! How can working class people relate to Keir Starmer, who is very posh, King's councillor, lefty human rights lawyer, or David Lammy? Now, he's exactly the same, but different colour. I can understand that working class people relate to Angela Rayner, or Fag Ash Lil, as I call her, because she does look down to earth. She looks like, really down to earth. She looks like, she, yeah, just about knows how to use a knife and fork, I think. I don't quite, uh, I don't quite get her. I quite, I quite like her. I don't, I don't get how she's a politician. And I think uh, my son, who is a conveyancing lawyer, Charlie, he, phoned, he sent me a text saying, oh no, guess who's in charge of housing, the new minister, uh, Angela Rayner. But I think it was a joke because she was, had this dispute about whether she had one house or a second house like that. And there was a great picture in there, a great cartoon, of, or, or a picture with like speech marks coming out where Keir Starmer's leaning over her and regarding the two houses that she's supposed to be. And he said, do you know, Angela, I've got a semi. <laughs> I bet he has. Anyway, let's talk about the Conservatives for a while. Now, I see I've not been mentioning Rishi Sunak's honours list. Rishi, what the fuck's going on? I've been practising. That's why my knee is so bad. That's why I've got tendonitis. No, what's it called? Uh, patella tendon bursitis or some shit like that. Anyway, I've been practising getting the knee and I think I deserve a night. I've got an OBE, of course. But, you know, I can't have Lenny Henry outrank me. I can't have Lenny Henry in the fucking Royal Box watching tennis when I've got to sit and watch it on my fucking telly that keeps going off because the internet packs up. Anyway, all the slagging off I got from you, uh, ex-Prime Minister, I think, uh, I think I deserve the old... Uh, oh, House of Lords, that'd do me. I'd sort it all out. I'd get the boats back. <sighs> They've started coming again today. The first lot arrived yesterday across the channel. Nothing has changed whatsoever, apart from the wind direction. So I had a little look. In Calais today, there is a light southwesterly wind, 10 knots, gusting 17, and a nice warm 14. And in the afternoon, it drops to four knots. The sea will be as flat as a witch's tit. And over they'll come in their hundreds. And now our fearless Prime Minister has cancelled the Rwanda plan. Mind you, I thought that was a shit plan. I thought that was the most ridiculous fucking plan I've ever heard of. So we're going to take you to Rwanda. Oh, lovely. It's very simple to stop the boats. What you do, right, as they're coming across the channel, instead of picking them up and bringing them in and sticking them in a hotel in Folkestone, poor bastards, it's bad enough being like an immigrant, staying in a hotel in Folkestone, they should stick them in a warehouse somewhere or in an army camp until they're fed up, you know, and then fuck them off home. Or put them in prison for entering the country illegally. Put them in prison. That's it. Put them in prison. Talking to prisons, Right? People are saying the Labour Party, this Justice Minister, I don't know her name, she's called that Mahmoud Mahalil, something funny, you know, typical front bench Labour name. And she, she is saying she wants to reduce the time that people are in prison. She wants to let prisoners out early. 40% of the crime done, they'll be let out, no matter what the crime is. Well, I'd fucking have a look at that if I were you. I don't believe anyone should be in prison uh, for three months. I don't think it's worth sending anyone to prison for less than a year. If they've done something bad, good. If not, take their money. Take this, do this, do that. And then, you know, if they, if they keep doing it, bang them up for five years. If you're going to put someone in prison, put them in fucking prison. And I think the way to empty those prisons, if they want to empty the prisons, good. Then you've got lots of bed space for all these fucking illegal immigrants that are coming in. Especially now they've got, ah, this might help us. Now we've got a lefty government in France. They might say, oh, no. We cannot let these poor foreigners go to England. Those roast beefs will be nasty to them. We will keep them here. We cannot have them go across La Manche. That's the channel in French. We can have them go across the uh, snatch in, uh, in their little berths with all the wives getting their feet soaking wet. They will get athletes of foot and we'll have to give them three things of canistan to put between the toes. We will keep them here. But if they don't keep them here, stick them in fucking prison. Prisons have got to get sorted. I used to do a lot of time in prison. James Timpson, have you heard of him? He's the geezer you go to if you want a key or your shoes have fell to fucking pieces. They've got these wonderful little outlets everywhere. They can make you a key or repair your, 
the shoes. But he's always been good for, uh, for the prisoners. I think he's a very good appointment. I think they've stuck him in the House of Lords. So that he'll sort out all their footwear there. They've probably got pairs of shoes those lords have had on for 60 years with a few holes in them and a bit of cardboard. Anyway, when I formed Care After Combat, we had the job of reducing reoffending by veterans in the criminal justice system, and it worked a treat. They say that 46% of people coming out of prison reoffend in the first year, and it goes up to 60% in the second year. Well, Care After Combat, under my guidance, of course, OBE, reduced that to 10%. They're doing even better now, I fucked off, and it's down to 8% of reoffending. Well done, care after combat. But one of the things that the veteran wants is, is irrelevance and being relevant. And you've got to have a job to do that. And Lord Timpson, who he is now known, uh, employed loads of them, not just the veterans, but your Commonwealth Garden Stanley Fletcher types as well. So I think if you do the crime, you do the time, but uh, you do need a hand to get yourself back on track so you don't keep doing that crime. It's quite simple, really. Prison should be a place of uh, rehabilitation. If I was in government, especially in the justice system, I would make a new law that any crime against the person will get double the sentence. So, so basically, if you nick a Rolex watch out of a shop, you know, you, you nick, a, nick a watch, you get a, a year in prison, okay? A year, a fucking year. But if you nick it off some girl's arm or some bloke's arm, frightening that fucking person to death and traumatising them, you'll get double that, OK? You nick it for some poor cow walking along, nick a bag. You know, these guys on the fucking mopeds come along, nick a girl's bag. These fucking girls, they, they shit themselves. And what are you going to do with that bag? Flog it for a tenner? You should go to prison for a fucking long time. Double the sentence. Anyone agree here? Yeah? Yeah. Quite right too. That's because you've all got Rolexes on, you're all getting too much money. No, I seriously think that the uh, offence against the person is scary. And, and in the end, people will stop going out. Now, we've got a new shadow chancellor. Her name's Rachel Reeves. And she looks like a nice, homely girl, doesn't she, having a little go? Well, she's asked the financial committee to have a look at the state of the country. And of course, she'll blame the Conservative Party. Oh, there's fuck all left here for us. Hey, let's blame the Tories for leaving it in a shit state. And this paves the way for raising taxes. Unless, of course, the Labour Party and this new government change tack. They've got to fulfil so many promises that, that, you know, where are they going to get the money from? I know where they're going to get the money from. The likes of us, me, you, 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 you. Just kick us harder. Make us fucker. So their slogan would be, work hard, support your community, be charitable, don't break the law, save your money. And when you've saved it, well, fucking take it and give it to the people who don't do none of the above, lazy bastards. Do you know what, though? You know, I say this. And because when you talk about politics, I find politics funny, you get people on YouTube that are watching this bit, lots of comments saying, oh, washed up gammon, you know, stick to comedy, you lost the election, you know, get on with it. Well, I didn't lose the election, the Conservatives lost the election. I'm not even a member of the Conservative Party, believe it or not, I'm just a supporter. And I believe the Conservative Party can get better. I really believe it can get better, especially if it invites Lee Anderson and Nigel to the table. It's got to get better, isn't it? Or we can put up with the Fagash Lil, David Lammy, Keir Starmer, an assortment of Dorises who think they know how to run a fucking country. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Right, before we go over to uh, the, um, the Ustream, don't forget, you can watch the election night special. Thousands of people signed up to watch it. So we, as I said, we've decided to leave it on for another 14 days. If you haven't registered to watch it, you can still do it now. Get on there. And by registering, you can go to our shop, you can buy this, you can buy boobs in the wood. I don't know what that is. Anyway, we'll give you another couple of weeks to have a look and see what the type of thing we do on Ustream. In fact, here's a little trailer for you now. And don't forget, when you do sign up to Ustream proper, you get seven days free. May we have our first contestant, please? Your name? Nigel Farage. Your occupation? Unemployed. Your chosen subject. Great disasters of the world. OK, Nigel Farage, you have one minute on great disasters of the world starting now. In which country was a volcanic eruption that disrupted air traffic in 2010? France. In which country was the tsunami on Boxing Day in 2001? France. What country is responsible for 90% of global warming? France. Why did Britain have Brexit? France. Who assassinated JFK? France. Who caused the Great Fire of London? France. At the end of that round, Farage, I wouldn't go to Saint-Tropez for a holiday if I were you. Saint-Tropez, where's that?
France. Now you fucking got it.